this week on Clown College. I, I think I'd be Japanese, dude, because they kind of they're kind of like the white Asian. I've uh-huh. heard this comparison before. The white they, Asian? They practiced imperialism and shit. Uh. They did some brutal things, like uh, in Nanking. Some real fucked up shit. If you're going to want to How many people that, did he kill? Nanking is a place. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a place. Yeah, it's a city in China. Okay. <laughs> and we need to talk about something more serious. Uh, if sci fi's not on a show, he needs to stay his ass out of the grave room. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for saying this. I please. mean, what, I was just looking. I was like, oh, we we get we get all this. Who put uh, him on the board? Who put <laughs> him on the board? <laughs> this is the Clown College Podcast. We're just a couple open micers trying to make our way through the scene. Where we interview comedians throughout different stages of their comedy career, no matter if they're open micers, headliners, or traveling comedians. I'm here too, Jamie 2.0. I just talk a lot more. Damn it, Brandon. Go sit in the corner. I saw some people get fucked up on those things uh, while you were uh, performing. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure two people died while you were performing back there, man. <laughs> two car flipping and shit. Dom's killing, yeah. dude. Hey, 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 you hey. killed literally. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like Panama City Beach. Every car looks like that on like, the yeah. main road by the mall, dude. It's real <laughs> bad. It's a lot of like 17-year-old rednecks driving that kind of shit i'll never forget i saw a truck with like a galaxy wrap on it you know what i mean it looked like space yeah and me and my friend were walking and we were wearing matching shirts and the dude yelled the f slur out of, out of his wow, truck man. at us and i was like dude yeah, he was right uh, dang <laughs> okay black people do that all the time no they Family don't reunions yeah, that's different how is that different? Not dude? two friends wearing the same shirt. Okay, I'm we're, up we're with on that a beach too. trip. Black people do that too. They yeah, wear tri- yeah. shir- trip shirts, dude. Mm-hmm. So are you mad because it's cultural? No, appropriation? I have. Yeah, I go to. I, I'm part. Of, I'm the Johnson <laughs> family reunion. God damn it! I got four shirts in there right now. All right. Well, it was me and the other dude was Mexican. That's even worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I feel like Inter- that too. Interracial okay, gays, man. dude. <laughs> what is this world coming to, man? <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> what did you say? I said in fourth grade, <clears throat> I fell victim to that too. It's okay, man. Like me and my friend did a uh, what would you want to be when you grow up thing. And you know, I, of course, picked wrestling, if you can't tell. And we pulled up as tag team partners. And uh, we did the Macho Man. You know where you had the, the cut strings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought that was cool because at first I was cutting it like the Undertaker. But then I said, nah, we do the stripes. And then I pulled up in there. And these are all kids saying, man, that's gay as shit, bro. And I was like, come on, man, this ain't gay. Look at him. And they're like, yeah, but you're not him. You're gay. And then the <laughs> F word was from. It was horrible, man. <laughs> F word was and what, around. what age was this? <sighs> man, I was like 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. That is cool, though, to have the uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage arm things. Come yeah. On. And you said this was career that? day? Yeah, they were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we were like, we want to be tag team partners. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even make fun of them, dude. My grandma, when I was in the first grade, for career day, dressed me up as a Native American chief, dude. Mm. I straight up looked like Red Man Chew. Like, <laughs> for real. The feather headdress, toy bow and arrow. I'm in like a tan poncho and shit. <laughs> Damn. It was not good, dude. <laughs> That's so fucking crazy. For yeah, day. I'm just glad, like, it wasn't a red face situation. There was no makeup involved, you know? <laughs> good. But I, I love that... that she just thought you could just have that career. Like being a Native American is an occupation. <laughs> a chief. Anybody can do it. You just buy a casino. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. So welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Yep. Clown College episode twelve. I thought it was episode thirteen. Man. It, it is. It I'm, is I, episode thirteen. I said it 13. wrong. Yep, 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 yep. I said it wrong. <laughs> I got the I right. mispronounced twelve yeah. as thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're back. Hell yeah. <laughs> we're back, well, dude. Oh, so uh, what's going on? Um, Well, the mics are back now that the ice storm is over. Hell yeah. It was, I got to do the the new comedy showcase at Stand Up Live. Woo, shout out. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, shout out to Charlie, Jake, Ty, Daniel, the headliner. Yeah, but. You guys fucking murdered. Killed it. Hell yeah. Scott, did that, Brandon. Did. It was amazing. Uh-huh. 
Mm-hmm. They did, uh, yeah, Scott Open, mm-hmm. and then you all did eight minutes. Yep, eight uh, minutes. Uh, uh, just, you know, that's not light work. No. You know what I'm saying? You came, easy. and they all brought the fire. Hell yeah. Had that crowd roaring. You yeah. did. Mm-hmm. It was fun, man. It was fun. The green room was cool, that's seeing bad. all Hell the signatures. Yeah. Saw Burt Kreischer, Chris Tucker, you know, the best comedian of all time, Matt Reif. Yeah. Every, everybody's a goat. <laughs> you know <laughs> crazy so he is on there <laughs> so that was cool there was free sugar free red bull so i took advantage of that put a couple in my pocket when i was walking out yeah i might not you, make you it earned back, it dude yeah, you, gotta do <laughs> you earned it yeah oh you'll be back you'll be back in black hell uh, yeah Brandon. i don't know about the black part but you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Man. hey dude as soon as they make transracial a thing bro i'm switching teams might Which, not where you be going? black. I'm a yeah, where Asian, you go? maybe. Asian? Oh, okay. I think so, dude. Hmm. <laughs> Why do you make that face? No, well, what's what wrong with that? I'm just saying, Asian, you're going to have to take... You can't go straight from white to black. That's fine. You, I'm not guess, saying... I'm, I'm just saying out like, of all, all the all races. So you're saying, but you have to take everything that comes with it. Yeah. You'll be yeah. smaller. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. There's some big Asian, and you'll I mean, be really, you'll probably be really smart. I mean, which when you when you say Asian, we're all talking about Chinese, right? No, a no, Japanese no. and Korean, right? I, I'd rather, I, I think I'd be Japanese, dude, because they kind of, they're kind of like the white Asian. Uh, I've heard this comparison before. The white they, Asian, they practiced imperialism and shit. Uh. They did some brutal things, like uh, in Nanking, some real fucked up shit. If you're gonna, how many, how many people that, did he kill? Nanking is a place. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a place. Yeah, it's a city in China. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, we learn something new every day. <laughs> Nanking, brother of Martin Luther King. <laughs> Martin Luther King. You know him, Brandon? Reverend Martin Luther King. <laughs> Can I know Martin Luther? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a guy. You ever uh, listen to his speeches? <sighs> okay, which one? <laughs> Wait, which I one? Which one? No, oh, the high, I have a dream one. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I, yeah. It's been 10 years. Yeah. yeah. I heard he was a good speaker. Yeah, he loved white speaker. women, too. He yeah. did. Huh? I don't know. I didn't know. I was I know. like, that's I why I, was I know like, he was hey. cheating on his wife, though. Yeah, well, yeah. you have to release if, you know, they're beating the shit out of you every day. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm you not. You can't just put that all on his poor wife. I mean, that's just another plus. Mm-hmm. I like him more. <laughs> He's got personality. The fuck, are we talking about? <laughs> it is a uh, uh, Black History Month. Yes, it is. It, let's yeah, let's it give is. a little applause right there. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude! It's the first episode of Black History Month. Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. So for <laughs> for the month of February, I will be replaced by Ty Funny. He's <laughs> gonna take my spot, guys. I'll be back next month. <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked off homegrown too. Damn. It's fine. I'm not pissed about it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> What'd you say? Affirmative action? Yeah, it's a it's affirmative action, dude. I thought they ended that. I thought that was unconstitutional, but apparently <laughs> not. No. Oh shit. Yeah, it was it was it's been a fun week. Uh yeah, like you said, we get to go back. This next week stack full of mics. Hell yeah. Yeah. Besides well today. Oh we're we're shooting this out of order too. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell by my pimp purple jacket but uh yeah. it's not gonna okay be what what is this collar situation that's going I on no it's got so, like a weird it's like a detective huh? so it's like it pops out and then you can zip it yeah and then you go out see i bought but it's it like it's still it zipped like up a, even when it's unzipped i'm like not gonna lie i look like some lips mm-hmm. you know, like, little put slips yeah, i try to fuck it but whatever that's what it I'm looks saying. like the bottom of a thai vagina you know <laughs> It's like a Muppet's vagina. A Thai vagina? Yeah. Is that a thing? What's Isn't a Thai that a stereotype vagina? that like some Asian women have purple vaginas? I never heard that. I never heard that. Really? No. no. I mean, it Maybe might I'm be. alone in no, that, no, no. dude. Google it. All right, let's see. What, let's <laughs> like, I'm thinking like you really the, the see Elmer's this? glue purple. Y'all want to see What? This? Elmer's glue. The stick? The purple one? Okay, I can see. I get, I get, I get. Yeah, it's kind of like this purple, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grimace esque purple, dude. Right, let me click right out of here. All right, so let's see. Elmer's glue purple. <laughs> or do you want to see the tie pussy? No, 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 no Okay, <laughs> all right, we can show you. <laughs> that was already <laughs> in the history, dude. Just go to his bookmarks. <laughs> okay, I got you. Nah, I'm oh shit! The color purple. <laughs> the color purple. 
Black History Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good yeah, movie. Dude, you told Hoppo to beat me. Did you watch the new one? No. I got to watch that. No. The, the first one's a hard watch, huh? I said I got to watch that. Color Purple, the yeah, original? Yeah. Well, Oprah? Man, I need to. Danny Glover? Mm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Danny Glover. Yeah, that's good. I used to get them think, mixed up with Donald Glover. <laughs> I used to be like, hey, man, I listen to Donald Glover. I thought Danny. they I thought they were father and son. <laughs> Me too. I thought that was his dad. Yeah. I was like, Danny Glover? Yeah. Yeah, because you got Danny and Donald. Yeah, Shit. when Donald Glover came out, when, like, when he first came out, you're like, clearly that's that's Danny Glover. It's the double D effect. Yeah, son. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I thought Danny Glover was white. What? That's who I am in the poster on yeah. the... Um, Lethal oh. Weapon. Hey, that's not I'm getting too argument. old for this shit. Yeah, I was thinking of somebody else, man. Who was you thinking <laughs> I <don't know>. of? <laughs> I was thinking of like a white dude with a mullet. Are you thinking he was Mel Gibson? No, I thought it was a different guy entirely. What, like Joe Dirt? <laughs> <laughs> yes. There we go. That's yes. the guy. He's Joe Dirt. Huh? So he's a good man, I'm guessing. Who? Joe Danny? Dirt. Oh, Danny, I don't know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, don't maybe. Hey, Danny, I hope you are a good man, eh? Hey? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love you, Brandon. <laughs> don't ever change. Yeah. So what's going on? What's new with you, yeah. Brandon? What's man, going on in your life? it's been good. I've been doing uh, open mics and then seeing people kill, of course. You know, stand-up live. So mm-hmm. JJ Shout right out. There. Hell yeah. Hit him, hit, him, hit, him, hit him with the plot. Hit him with the yeah, plot. There it is, and... Yeah, doing good shit. I mean, I realized I could hold fucking guinea pigs now too. I took another step up. Where'd you find? Where'd you encounter a guinea pig? My sister. She put her guinea pig on me randomly. It was like, oh, so she want to hold cats now? Now you can hold this, and I did hold it. So you pet it? Yeah, I petted it. Yeah, and then after that, as a dude waiting for me on the corner with big ass blunt, he was like, "You want some of this shit?" And I'm like, "Nah, man, I'm at work right now. I can't, can't fucking do that shit." And he was like, "Just hook me up." I don't go over 60. What the fuck? What? Yeah. This, this, and then now, it, this it, has it, nothing to do with the gerbil or whatever. Baby pig. Oh, I was just telling you about my week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. But continue. What What was he talking about there? Oh, he just talking about this big roasted blunt. He was like, you want some of this? I was like, nah, nah, man. Nah, I'm good. Uh-huh. I passed. Self-control. Good job. Good job. Yeah, right. I'm busy right now, bro. Just and it might have had some in it. Yeah, I don't Remember know what the PCP. hell going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the best stuff you'll get, man. I don't uh-huh. know. Then I'd be a whole different man. It's the best crack in northern Alabama. Dude. Yeah, fuck crack. I don't want to I don't want to accidentally do some meth, man. Like mm-hmm. we, we already got one person that accidentally did that. I don't we know don't need to take <laughs> For just, joke purposes, yes, I actually I'm did just meth. Playing, yeah. No, you, I mean, you're right. But I, <laughs> I don't know if it was meth or bath salts. Is bath salts. It could have been either. Yeah. It could have been either. You know, take your pick. Yeah. Dude. When you're that far, like, getting fucked up, it doesn't matter, man. Yeah. Because you just, when you just want a little cocaine button, that was years ago, hmm. 10, 10 some plus years ago. That's but, fine. But, yeah, that's uh, cool, man. But when you want to just do a blast, you know, you don't want to be up for. You know, sixteen hours. Yeah, off of one line. <laughs> okay. So I don't know what it was, but it was uh, it was something. But I feel like I feel like crack could probably teach you things. You know. But crack is like you got to do it too much, and then you're smoking that much of that harsh shit. Yeah. You, you, you're gonna smoke crack, and then you're gonna be want to get high in the so next. How 20 do minutes. people? Okay, so if you're addicted to crack, mm-hmm. how do you die? Does the crack kill you, or is it just like the side effects, not eating, or? No, well, Junebug. I think he died of like heart stuff, and oh, it shit, be heart, yeah, yeah heart related. Anything like that. Yeah, it's gonna be anything that uh, pumps your heart that that fast and gets you going like that. Yeah, crackheads do. They do live. It's not like they die young. You know, it's not that like they die at fifty. They have, they They're here to, for a good time, not I'd a long say, I'd say time. You get a, dude. you get a good sixty-five year old crackhead. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good life on a mm-hmm. crackhead. Dude. Yeah, yeah. You, you can make it to sixty-five. You can definitely make it sixty-five. Do you think there's people in, like, high-level white-collar jobs in corporate America that, like, recreationally smoke crack? Without a doubt. But, like, what do you think is... who Who's, like, the most famous? Or, like, who makes the most? Mm. Is there a level where you have to give up the crack to get farther? Well, with crack, once you do it, it doesn't matter how rich or whatever you are. You want crack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Like heroin. You want... You want to do heroin. It doesn't matter how. You just act erratic on crack sometimes. Okay. Sometimes you're really happy. Yeah. My boy's dad was a, 
he he dibbled and dabbled. I don't know if it was crack or if he just did coke, but he uh, <laughs> you'd always know when we go over there and be like, oh shit, he ain't he ain't had none in a minute, or he ain't oh, got the damn. money to get it. Now we about to he will kick us out, but get the fuck out of here. Damn, I damn. used to be scared. I'd be on my bike. Oh my gosh, <laughs> ride away. <laughs> But then when he had it, it was the best dude in the world. And then when yeah. I got older, I was standing a little bit. But uh, I give him, I give him twenty. He like, man, see that's why I fuck with you, big bone crusher. <laughs> what well, hell yeah. He a bone crusher. Come here. Hey, that's, <laughs> hey, that's my boy, JT. <laughs> that bone crusher, come here. here. I was the best friend after that. Uh, hell yeah, man. <laughs> that was my road though. Hell. Good times. Yeah, you seem to know a lot of crackheads, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, people smoke crack. Yeah, they do. Were, I mean, I don't know any like now. In here, like in this, uh, in Huntsville, but like where I grow up, you know, it's just like your family, people's, uh, your friends' family. It's just, they're just around. Yeah, a lot of crackheads yeah. around. Yeah. And now I think it's meth. Yeah. I think because it's like easy, it's, you get high longer and all that shit, you get a good, good little meth. I think some yeah. people do start doing meth because they think it's Coke or people are telling them that it is Coke. It could be. It looks the same. It's it like ice or whatever because they snort that. And then they get addicted to meth, but they thought it was coke. I think ice is something different, though. I mean, it's is still it meth. meth. It's still meth, but there's oh. like different forms of it. I believe because you ice, got like, water, vapor, <laughs> smoking crack the, is the, the meth okay. airbender. <laughs> Damn, that'd be a meth fast bender, ass. Dude. Yeah, the meth. Be fast. As meth fuck, nation <laughs> versus heroin nation, dude. <laughs> oh, meth will uh, fuck them up. Heroin, they're too chill. They're too crack. You think crack nation? <laughs> oh, crack nation. They're, they're the OGs, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got some fucking machinery you never thought of. Yeah, that'd be some scary shit, man. Resourceful. <laughs> Shoot CDs at you and shit. Catch you up. <laughs> the general walk Blue up to Ray. them. Guys, they stole all your crack, and you're gonna have to get it back. Fucking next hour, they're gonna have all that shit back. Mm-hmm. He's gonna tear everything up, man. They got, they're they're gonna like get that shit. If you get enough crackers together, they'll build a spaceship if a lot of crackers on the moon. Fuck yeah. If you get enough of them together, they would absolutely accomplish this. You could build a and whole And we need to think about this when we're thinking about what we need in this country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you Fuck want, it. if you, if you, if you good and you like know some crackers, they will get you the best shit. Like now, I couldn't imagine all the technology they would have. They steal it. But uh, we can get Hunter Biden. Let's elect him, dude. dude I heard he was dabbling. If in he crack. knew any secrets, that motherfucker was telling every prostitute that he fucked. You just know what he was telling prostitutes the craziest uh, thing. Like a $75 hooker. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. She knows all these secrets. <laughs> for sure. She 5, knows more than generals, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and she just gets fucked. Like, damn. <laughs> Like, yeah, we're supposed to invade North Korea in 2025. <laughs> She's got the 10-year plan. Yeah. Hold up. Let me get you that little <laughs> da-da-ding. Yeah. That was so lame. Da-da-ding. No, that was lame. That was lame as shit. No, not lame. I said late. Late. Yeah. da da D. There you go. <laughs> Brandon, that's it's not even the right sound. Not even- that's not... You hear it in your headphones. Though. I know, but I, I, I just my 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 words are weird when I do it. Did you ever have to take the hearing test yes. in elementary school with the headphones? Mm-hmm. I feel like Brandon failed, but the nurse wasn't paying attention. Dude. Yeah, I we were talking like about that the other other day. You do have hearing problems, right? Yeah, uh, I know I do. I man. do too. I can't hear shit. Yeah, I can't hear, man. I can see pretty good. I can't hear. You don't wear any contact. Nope. You wear contact? No. Yeah, I do. I got to get my eyes checked though, man. It's mm-hmm. been a while. Can you see a shit blurry? Sometimes it'd be blurry. Sometimes I did that for, I literally, because I was supposed to wear glasses and I couldn't put contacts in at first. So, like, until I was probably 27, I didn't wear any glasses unless I, like, had to shoot for qualifying or something like that. And then uh, and then I just start putting contacts in. I'm like, damn, this is so much better. I can see shit. Yeah. I could I'll always be like this. <laughs> Just sacrificing your vision because you don't want to look lame. <laughs> yeah. I used to have glasses, though, but I remember I would always lose them. And then whenever I put them on, people would be like, man, you look even more special. So I was like, fuck that. No. Just take the shit off. Yeah. Well, I imagine, Brandon, you had, like, the goggles with the strap that goes around no, that your was head. When, <laughs> that was when I played when basketball. When he's wrestling. Grants. <laughs> no, that's when I played basketball. Like, literally. You I did still, have it? Yeah, for basketball. He did have it. Like, then. when I played basketball because I thought Kareem. that was cool. That's who I was trying to be like. I was like, let me try to get the sky hooked. You I played got, for the school? 
my school. No, man, they always made me the water boy. Mm -hmm. And then one time they all got together and like, Brandon, look, man, some people are just meant to be something. And you are meant to be a water boy. What kind of bullshit is that? Did they make a movie about this? <laughs> no, radio. man, I'm, I, that's what they did. I was thinking water boy. Uh, but. No, man, they literally said, you are the best water boy ever. Dude, I'm just handing you water. What the fuck? Yeah, but you when were, I was you trying to be on the team, uh huh, and then I got on a real team for a recreational uh, park, and that shit was horrible. Not that fit. was embarrassing. I was fat. They made me wear these <laughs> tight ass like uh, shorts because they didn't have a bigger size. And then like it would just be going up and shit. And I'd be doing this and trying to shoot people, be blocking my shot because I was like five feet five or uh, five four, uh -huh. maybe six foot, and it was so bad. Some of the teammates would be crying and shit, man. It was crying like, crying like, yeah, like y'all getting your ass beat yeah, so bad. That's yeah, that's how bad it was. Like, like one of the dudes, yeah. he was like, I can't do this shit no more. I like, just hang in there, bro. I can't do How old are y'all? I can't do it <laughs> like, anymore. <laughs> we like 13. Um, this week's featured comedian. It's uh, hard being a lesbian in the South, y'all, because they make all sorts of assumptions about us based on how we look. For example, my wife is more feminine than I am. So they assume that I'm the guy, whatever the fuck that means. So I'm like, all right, let's test your theory for a second. Uh, I hold a purse when we go shopping. I open doors for her. I like sports more than she does. But y'all, she's way more into porn and motorboating. <laughs> and she's killing all the bugs, it don't hold up. <laughs> she's 15 years younger than I am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but in Alabama, that really messes with them, y'all. They look at us all sideways like, mother, y'all. <laughs> Sisters? You don't reckon they're queer, do you? <laughs> all I know is they're way more comfortable with me kissing her when they think I'm her sister. <laughs> they're all time. Too fucking loud. <laughs> I was trying to listen for that static. I was like... <laughs> I was zoned in. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't hear any static. It's good. That's, That's good, perfect. Man. You guys That's good. did a good job. Huh? Yeah, Big oh, yeah. pro producer extraordinaire over there. Yeah, hold up, man. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. roaring applause. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, hold up. Yeah, yeah turn that down a tad bit. <laughs> Brennan gets key happy on there. No, he he wants it up loud whenever it's his. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. He'll he turn gets it down pop. for everybody else's. <laughs> that makes sense. JJ, yep. we got a special guest today? Very special mm -hmm. guest. Oh. Today we have uh, somebody who's an absolute pillar in the Huntsville comedy. Strong scene. one. Strong one. Mm -hmm. uh, the owner of Shenanigans Comedy Theater. Great. Can, can, can I cut in there? Oh, huh? for sure. Founder. Founder. Oh, founder. Co-founder. Co-founder. There we go. Co-founder yeah. of Shenanigans Comedy Theater. <laughs> <laughs> and I make that distinction because it's a non-profit. And okay. People don't own non-profits. Oh, um, okay. okay. Yeah. That's our bad. That's, that's our bad. Right. I right. intern at a non-profit. I should know this, but I don't. <laughs> but a uh, uh, hilarious comic. Uh, One of the best. Shenanigans. They run different like comedy variety shows they do a lot of different stuff community outreach really cool stuff going mm -hmm. on over there it's uh kimberly Games. wilson kimberly yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. well, thank you thank you very much. thank you for coming on i, was, oh, I, 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 I knew what on. i should have said man what i drive the way i drive i go on a the research park to like get into Huntsville, get uh -huh. into town. I see this electronic billboard with a Mercedes oh, advertisement, yeah. <laughs> and I see Kim on there, and I'm like, "Holy shit, that's crazy!" I see that too. <laughs> see, I didn't, I didn't know Kim was out there like that. And then I was watching TV, I was watching a game, and then a commercial came on. I was like, "Hold the fuck up, is that Kim?" <laughs> Lexus of uh, it was a Lexus Mercedes Mer Mercedes, Mercedes of Huntsville. I'm yeah. like, oh, she's big balling out there. <laughs> oh, commercials, billboards. I see, and she's hilarious. I'm talking about hilarious. We hilarious. did a show, uh, Sci-Fi's. It was all black show and Kim. And was it that? I don't know which one, but I know I I, did, I thought there was an intermission, so I walked outside to smoke a cigarette, and I came back, and Kim was on stage, and you could hear the wall shaking mm. from the outside as you walk in. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> Kim was in there murdering, <laughs> like tearing that fucking place down. Kills, Hell kills. Yeah. I think I saw your first ever headline set at Shenanigans. It was yeah. there, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. I did like a full forty-five. That okay. was. Yeah. Man, that when was, was good. this? That was, I want to say July. 
Something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm full great. 45. We got big comedians yeah. in here now. They know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, us combined don't have 45. No. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's great. No, we don't. <laughs> so how you doing, Kel? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on and for cooking. I, I'm just going to spill the tea here. But uh, this dude can cook. I do. I'm saying. Hell yeah. yeah I do a lot. Every week. Me? Ooh, well. All I'm right. glad you like that. I'm glad you like that. So, so uh, Kim, you do a lot of um, like uh, shows around Huntsville, and it's not just stand up, uh, improv, which uh, are hilarious. I hear always good uh, things about the improv set, the what the drag shows is that what they call? It? Well, it depends on which version. But yeah, yeah. There's we do a lot of shows, but instead of just doing regular drag shows, we do drag as a component within shows. Now. Okay, okay. Because there, you can catch regular drag shows everywhere now, mm-hmm. and so. My wife Jessica, it was Shout it out. was her mm-hmm. that was like, okay, we like doing drag and we want to support that community, but we're not doing what everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. So, like last night, we had Drag Family Feud, and I love it. <laughs> next uh, two weeks from now, we're going to have a drag show uh, murder mystery. And that'll be the second one actually. Had one before and it sold out and it was great. So, like you play, they play the roles and the audience has yep. to pick who. Oh, so they do drag numbers, so they're earning their tips and performing drag, but mm-hmm. then. And Jessica actually writes the whole script and everything. She oh, writes oh. the entire murder mystery, oh, wow. and um, has a we do a who done it, and the audience takes notes and interacts with the performers to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So get, get your tickets on Sellouts.com because it's going to sell out. But, yeah, you know. and I want to tell you because I've everything I've shown my friends. Uh, they all love it, like the Perv Bingo. Like I think people would love to come to these shows. Uh, what yeah. else you got? You got Perv Bingo. Yeah, and that's uh, just, I'm not correcting you, but uh-huh. so they know what to look for. It's bingo Perv. Bingo Perv, okay. What's funny is like everybody says that. They're, they're like, <laughs> Perv Bingo. Perv bingo. <laughs> like, well, if you want to be the Perv first and <laughs> not play the games, whatever. But um, yeah, it's like an adult game night, 18 and up, because mm-hmm. uh, it's not for the faint of heart. But yeah, it's we Jessica and I make up most of our shows that are end up being big hits are made up when we're bored and need to fill a spot on the calendar. And we're just like, all right, what can we come up with here? I love it. And that's what we do. So like that's that's has been one of our biggest shows and continues to grow. So that's really fun. Okay. And um you do a lot of improv there. Do you do you perform the improv? I don't as much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um I I am the referee and the host for Improv Thunderdome. And so I basically introduce and run the games and such, and then I play with them on stage at the end when we do a game called Pocket Lines and Freeze Tag. Um, but then I don't perform very much of the improv anymore. It's okay. just, it, like I like improv, mm-hmm. and I have a lot of respect for the very talented people we have doing it there. And honestly, I'd rather kind of be on the production end and let them shine because they sh- are so good at it. I love that. I got yeah. that same mindset. That's why I got these guys. Yeah. <laughs> these are <the> talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, nobody else is doing those type of shows Mm-mm. in Huntsville. Not not much, if at all. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm shocked at like shenanigans is a genuinely cool spot you Thank can you. go have a drink get some snacks watch a good comedy show a good improv show audience involvement i mm-hmm. was looking forward to uh justin ledlow's show the player yeah. you that it's like interactive improv where the audience gets yeah, involved he was telling me that's about dope that. man mm-hmm. that's dope yeah. yeah and audience love audiences love to be involved right yeah when you do that you just bring you know you really they're really happy whenever they leave uh shenanigan well, one of the speaking of Justin's show, oh, look, let me just knock this around. <laughs> speaking of Justin's show, it, we had to postpone it because it's during the ice apocalypse <laughs> that we had. But he did like a preview of that on the last comedy test kitchen, and I can explain that if you want. But um, and the game was that he left the room, gave a random audience member a pool noodle, and then got a suggestion from the audience, and the suggestion was, you know, in the in the process of this other thing that he's doing, which mm-hmm. was to kind of to deliver an address, what thing 
can we whack him with a pool noodle, pool noodle every time he does? And so the audience said every time he puts his hands like straight down at his sides, uh-huh. and but he doesn't know what he's doing to get whacked. Oh, right? I so love he that. comes back in and he starts doing his thing. And this guy, and it's funny because the guy had a messed up leg, so he was on one of those scooters, knee scooters, uh-huh. and he's up there <laughs> on stage, knee scooter, just like this with a pool noodle, and then every time Justin put his arms down, he's like, whack! And Justin, <laughs> by the end, Justin was traumatized. He's like, what am I doing? <laughs> but it was hilarious, and the audience loved it, and that's just a little taste of the kind of stuff they're going to do. But that's been rescheduled to March, I believe. I want to say March 15th, but HuntsvilleLaughs.com. Huntsville, HuntsvilleLaughs.com. Yep, mm. because people can't spell shenanigans. So <laughs> our URL is HuntsvilleLaughs.com. Again, shout out to my wife for that. Shout out. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I love it. I can't spell shenanigans. All Me we have to, I, I do the voice thing. <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> See, that's the oldest way to do it. See, if, you should just go to the bio and click the link. You oh, know? see. Instant. Oh. But that's the yeah. I have to get on Facebook because that's where you're most. Uh, that's where yeah. you're on the most. Well, we're we're trying to grow our IG and it's growing slowly but surely. But yeah, we have like eleven thousand followers on Dang. Facebook. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so of course we're going to keep feeding that. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. where most people have eyes on us, and we've got. I excuse me as I look at my wife. How many <laughs> IG followers do we have about? Uh, anyway, not nearly as many. Less than half of that, but we're trying to grow that. So and, and follow face- us on Instagram. Yeah. Shenanigans. Comedy Theater. Yeah, it'll all be up there. Uh, <laughs> whenever, um, damn, I just forgot what I was about to ask you. No, but I, I, no, I don't know. So uh, you're a hilarious stand-up comedian, and we had uh, a show there for the newbies that you put on for us. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank for you all for the new that. comics. Thank we love you. it. The comics are talking about it. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really good stuff. And <laughs> what was your joke about my guy? <laughs> oh, my gosh, about Jason? Because <laughs> we murdered it whenever we tried to say it on there. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh. So the way that story goes is I'm in the booth. I am not hosting. I'm not performing. I'm not doing anything. We just, that again, this was me and Jessica coming up with a show concept. And so the show concept is that the host gets roasted at the end. Each of the new comics gets a chance to roast the host. Then the host goes back and roasts all the new comics. I'm sitting over there in the booth, and my good friend, I love him to death. His name's Jason Minter. And he Mm -hmm. was a new comic on the show. And so then he insults me. He starts roasting me, saying I look like I ate Tig Notaro and Fortune (laughs) Fiend or whatever. Nice fat joke. (laughs) But And so I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Here I'm catching shrapnel over here. What's that about? (laughs) So I just waited my turn. And then whenever Jonathan started roasting people, he got to Jason. Now, to give you some context, Jason is bald, but he is a ginger. So he has a very red beard and a complexion very similar to mine and so when it got to there and jonathan was about to move on i said hold up a second i get to roast jason if he roasted me so i just said that jason looked like i started shaving my pussy and stopped (laughs) murder murder Murder. it's the best joke of the night oh yeah for sure by far by far i mean you heard everybody oh man it was so fucking i couldn't just sit there and take it yeah yeah you got to hit him back. Who does he think he is? <laughs> I was standing right next to him on stage, and he went, <gasps> <laughs> he was taking it back. Clutched his pearls. <laughs> Jason's gay, too, by the way. <laughs> Just to add more context to the I, I couldn't pearl believe clutching. he only started in November. Really? Well, not to pat myself on the back or anything, but <laughs> he came through my comedy class. Oh, so. and, yeah, and you do teach comedy classes and improv mm-hmm. classes and sketch writing. Correct. All of those are taught there. I personally teach the stand-up class. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. And I was teaching the improv class, but now we've passed that off to a, another person. Actually, two guys, Matthew Carter and Ben Bowden, teach the improv. But, okay, okay. okay. Yep. And then KB Singer is teaching our sketch classes. And We had the guy, we had a guy yesterday who, are you guys familiar with Kim Peel? Oh, yeah. yeah. I love All sure. right, so... You know the substitute teacher sketch, the mm-hmm. one with yeah. A. A. Ron. A. A. Ron. Ron. Yep. Mm-hmm. Balake. Yep. The guy Jack Quillen. <laughs> the guy that wrote that sketch taught classes at Shenanigans yesterday. Oh, That's wow. dope. His name's Rich I heard, Tallarico. I, yep. I heard. I heard y'all. What'd you say his name was? Rich Tallarico. Rich Tallarico. Yep. 
But he's he was a big time writer on Sketch or Key and Peel Saturday Night Live Tonight Show, and he's teaching at Shenanigans. So we need yeah. we need to go to one of those yeah. sketch writing classes. <laughs> when I first sure. started, actually, I messaged Ty Funny because I found his Instagram. I saw he's doing Huntsville or comedy in Huntsville, mm-hmm. and I was like, "What should I do?" You know, I'm trying to get into this. He's just sent me the link to the stand up class at Shenanigans. <laughs> I was gonna sign up for it, but all the spots were taken for that specific like go around you got to get in there quick folks yeah all right? if you want to get a spot you better you just i'm telling you jason killed he murdered and uh only been doing it since november and this was in december right well, no he he took the class he took the first round so uh, he's been doing it about six seven months maybe mm-hmm. St- yeah. still extremely uh yeah. short and my friends who came they were like oh we love that guy he's yeah. so yeah. funny so if you want to be good in a relatively short time uh go to class that's genetics yeah. <laughs> there's tickets <laughs> to and learn commodity. from Gil. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. so I, I was watching uh a podcast you did about four years ago with scott called uh, uh oh oh okay yeah now i remember Go no, ahead. Show Huntsville is what it was called. Oh, was it? Right? No, that's not it, but it's something like that. Yeah. Mm. And then you yeah. were on there, and you, this was it was cool to see because this is when you first came or started shenanigans, mm-hmm. and it wasn't you didn't even have your alcohol license yet, yep. and it was it was it was so fun to go back and and and, and see you then. So you lived in Austin for how long? Seventeen. Well, I was in Texas for seventeen years. Okay. Lived in the Austin area for ten. So you're pretty much the reason for the comedy boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> single-handedly. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget Joe Rogan who. <laughs> Never heard of him. Yeah. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were there, uh, did you do stand-up or improv a I lot? I did improv. Okay. Predominantly. I did improv. Um, I started out getting trained with uh, Comedy Sports, which is kind of a national chain, and they had a – a thing in Austin, and the guy's name there was Les McGee. And then we started a gay uh, improv troupe, and I love the name. We were called the Three Dollar Bills. We were gay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were coached That's by good. a guy named Tom Booker, and yeah, did a lot of improv there. Stand up has been weird for me, and I don't know how much you want to go into it at this point, but oh, I kind of, when I was. Somewhere around between 19 and 21, I was still in Huntsville. Because I grew up here. I moved away for my first teaching job. That's how I ended up in Texas. Mm-hmm. But I uh, grew up here, family here. And then when I was around that age, there was, and Scott, I think, mentioned it, but there was a mainstream comedy club back in the day called The Comedy Club. <laughs> yeah. And it burned down. But before all that, they had their open mic night was on Thursday before the show that was going to be the weekend show. That's how they did it. And I remember going up and trying it and getting a favorable response, but I don't remember that much about it because I'm old, and that was a long time ago. (laughs) So um, I just kind of dropped it because college and moving and life happened. Mm -hmm. And then I I went to see an improv show and loved it, so that's how I got into that. But I still had this itch that I wasn't sure about with stand-up. So we moved back here in 2012. And we start doing our own thing with um, another business we had in Somerville called the Somerville Playhouse. It was like the precursor to shenanigans, but it wasn't a nonprofit. And started doing some performing there, got involved with improv there. And then in 2018, my mom passed away. And thank you. And it was it was really hard time Mm -hmm. because she's amazing human and in my heart. So I was really struggling and I had been going to Stand Up Live. It was very shortly after Stand Up Live first opened and saw that they were offering stand up classes there. And I was like, you know what? Maybe if I take this class, because my mom passed away in January, the end of January in 2018, the class happened in April. And with the encouragement of my wife, who is the most encouraging spouse on the planet, um, she's like, just go do this, you know, maybe it'll help you kind of forget, not forget stuff, but, you know, think about mm-hmm. something else mm-hmm. other than this. And so I was like, well, if I try it, then I'll know one way or the other, if it's something I should do, if I should just like, yeah, that's not really for me, whatever. Mm-hmm. At the time, uh, the main teacher was Jonathan Craig and, um, amazing guy, still a good friend of my day, like Jonathan, If the people that know Jonathan will know how true that this is. And for those of you that don't know him, he's that kind of guy who 
I was just in his class and by the second week he was my mentor, you know what I mean? Okay. Like he he was always willing to do everything he could to help and to be positive and all that. And to this day I could whip out my phone right now and text him and I'd get a response. Love people like uh, that. And keep in mind yeah. now he's one of Jelly Roll's people. So it's not like he's not busy. Oh. But he's yeah, the kind Scott of guy. was telling us about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that it doesn't matter what he's doing, I'm still his friend, you know. And he was a really good teacher. And then I met Scott that same way because Jonathan brought in Scott, Tom Hand, and another guy named Brandon Imes, who is in Tampa now, to kind of be uh, kind of like guest teachers mm-hmm. toward the end of the class when we were doing sets and stuff. And um, I I got up there and haven't looked back since as far as stand-up goes. We're glad you didn't. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's crazy how it all comes full circle, you know, yeah, from taking right. the class to then starting a place that acts as that for new up and coming comics. Yeah, that's Get awesome. That. Hell yeah. And you know, that's that's all kind of part of the the design of the way that Jessica and I kind of see and do most everything. And also shout out to Scott because after that class, um, he and Jonathan, because it kind of morphed when Jonathan started doing other things and Scott kind of stepped in as the main teacher of that class. And mm-hmm. both of them utilized me to come back and, and help with the class. I was, you know, kind of considered, you know, a, a helping alum, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, and then I also did some private coaching with Scott where he really helped me to build my um, joke writing muscles and stuff like that. So hats off to him as well. Hell yeah. It's awesome. Shout out. It's awesome. So you said you moved to Texas for your first teaching job. Yes. How would you compare teaching like an actual classroom of students at a school to compare it, like compare that to teaching stand up? Is it comparable? It's uh, apples and oranges. As long as you realize that the apples don't give a fuck <laughs> and the oranges <laughs> paid to be there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Makes I sense. love that. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I, I tried my hand at teaching. Yeah. I failed miserably. I, crashed and burned. I heard, I heard that. Oh, I was a, I was a student episode. teacher. The local high school in Huntsville. It was terrible. It was yeah. terrible. They, they hated me. I hated them. It's you know? not for everyone. <laughs> it's not. It's not. My hat's off to anybody who could do it. Same here. I'll tell you this. I was in, when I first moved to Texas, I was in Colleen, Texas, which is mm-hmm. Fort Hood, world's largest the hood. base. Yep. Yeah. Well, I know about the hood. <laughs> now, everything happens at the hood. I'm going to tell you this. You start teaching there, you're either going to make it or break it because oh, yeah. there is no in between. That's a completely transient student population because it's a military. Mm -hmm. So nobody, you know, is from there. Nobody is native to Colleen. People are always in and out. And that made it tough. And this was in the mid to late 90s. So gangs were a thing, um, a big thing in this area because these kids had no sense of belonging. They're, mm. they're not from there. They didn't grow up there. There's no family there. So you find family, you get in where you fit in, and gangs were a big thing there. Um, and But I I loved that, that population. I loved that experience because it taught me something I never would have learned if I stayed in Alabama. Hmm. Ever, love- ever. Mm-hmm. And I was successful with those kids because, you know, I – I'm not your typical Alabamian as far as the way that I grew up. Mm-hmm. My dad was in the military and he was a race relations officer during the civil rights movement. So mm-hmm. even though I'm out in the country and looking like I do, um, you, you never heard the, any racial slurs in our house. You never heard anything disrespectful because my dad was one of the first white dudes in Alabama that I know of that got it, you know? Mm, okay. and, and so he raised my brother and I that way. Um, so I think that had a big big part in me being successful when i went to texas mm-hmm. but i because you didn't look at them differently no you know yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i mean i had to learn some things just because their their way of life being transient even though i was a military kid i didn't move around a lot uh, past like preschool age mm-hmm. we were pretty much settled by the time that i was in school so that was different from these kids but um, we did share a lot of similarities as far as understanding what it meant to be a military kid and have parents be deployed and things like that, because that did happen even after we were settled. My dad got, you know, shipped off to Korea and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. But, um, you know, it, it's a fantastic realization that 
the thing that you weren't even aware was going on in your childhood opened you up to a richness of life you wouldn't have otherwise experienced. Mm, I love Damn. that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I seen you were on a roast battle. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> With was some so much fun. Big names. Yeah. Huge names. Yeah. Who'd you have? You had Tony Hinchcliffe, uh, Jeff Ross. Was Tony in that one? I remember oh, Jeff well, that's what, being there. Je- oh, okay, okay. And then, tell, can you tell us about this? Because that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, before um, Shenanigans, it was kind of like, I don't, rem- I don't think we had started Shenanigans when that happened. I don't remember exactly. But it was in the early days, and I was doing a lot more stuff at, Shenan- or at Stand Up Live before um, Shenanigans, just mainly scheduling stuff. A problem mm-hmm. but um lucy who is the booker for zanies in nashville and also does a lot of the booking at stand up live okay she contacts me because i've been doing a lot of stuff and she said hey you want to be on this roast battle well i'm not like a natural roaster because i don't like hurting people's feelings <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of a wimp in that regard um but then and plus I was new and mm-hmm. so I was kind of timid in that regard but she's like you know you'll you'll get to know who you're going to be against so then you know you can prepare it's not like you have to go up and do it off the cuff I'm like okay yeah I'll do it no problem oh yeah so I went up against Brad Sativa out of Nashville <laughs> and do you guys know of Brad I've yeah. seen Pull some stuff on social media you. yeah he's an amazing comic and he's doing really cool stuff he's all around all around the U.S. at this point. But um, Brad has a similar beard structure to Jonathan, except for he doesn't have a mustache. Ooh, Amish oh. style. Yeah. yeah. And so I went hard on that. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there he is. You see what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I went up against Brad, and I was ready, and he was just going to kind of play it off the cuff. I guess he thought he was you know, just going to be all right without preparing. He went down. Oh, damn. Killed him. Yeah. Buried him. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, I used the roast he did against me as part of my opener for a long time, though, because he's very funny. Like, mm. he told me I look like uh, I could be both Dan and Roseanne Connor. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That was a great roast. That's good. Yeah. Look like I look like a polyamorous stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Those are fun. I love your joke. I don't want to put it out there because, uh, give your material away but you know uh the big test joke how you end <laughs> off on that one yeah. The t- <laughs> yeah, I love that joke. Yep. Uh, anyway yeah that roast battle was fun and um that it was a packed house and it each each little local match was just kind of because the what they did is they got i want to say three or four pairs of us to roast each other that were fairly local huntsville nashville that kind of thing and then after that, they had their touring comics that got up and roasted each other as part of the roast battle. But it was full production. They had the guy over here on the ones and twos. And, <laughs> and then the, the real rowdy guys running around with all their stuff. It, it was fun. Damn. <laughs> oh, that that's cool. I always want to do a roast. Uh, but I'm not good enough yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I could write some. I could write some. Uh, some dingers, I think. <laughs> you need to try it out. We've done some roast battle type stuff at Shenanigans too. We like to build roasting into stuff. Okay. So mm-hmm. similar to what we did, because just having a whole show of roast, it gets kind of repetitive. Mm-hmm. And especially, we do a lot of stuff tournament style. So if you have somebody that keeps going through the tournament, well, then you've hit on just about everything they can be roasted for pretty quick. Mm, okay. So, yeah. Those are all things that you gotta consider when you're building shows like that. Okay, so whenever you know you're gonna go up against somebody, but you go to the next round, so you just have to have material for everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. and then hope, and then if somebody says yours, you gotta take it out. Right, you gotta now, pay attention. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, everybody's like, "Heck, yeah, never right." Heard that. Just heard that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that, that's good. That's challenging. That's yeah. what I was worried about with uh, roasting Jonathan on yeah. the uh, <laughs> newbie show because he has a very distinct look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, but Leanne went the hardest on his look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. All those commercials. I thought he was going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> like, she hit him hard. He, he probably like, did after. Yeah. I saw him in no, his I car. I don't mean that. In a, now, JJ said that. I didn't say that. Right next to that white baby he had in his yeah. Honda Civic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
right. I, I do want to say I just saw this on like our intel sheet from uh-huh. our undisclosed researcher that will remain anonymous. <laughs> I love how number five is double knee replacement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. God. Hold on. He earned And that. then in parentheses, <laughs> comedy is a full contact career. <laughs> <laughs> I that love it. Man. He's the best at tell guy. That he is. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right, so am I commenting on that, or you're just observing? <laughs> I, uh, I you just thought have... that was funny. <laughs> that's it, well, a cool. I mean, hey, go researcher because you're right. I had them both done at the same time. Damn, I am Damn. no wimp. Okay. Damn. Yeah, that's um, thugging it out yeah. right there. Yeah. But you know, how long it, were you in the wheelchair for? I not after I got out of the hospital. I was I went straight walker. Wow. Oh damn. Yep. How the fuck? <laughs> this is new technology. That's my huh? wife. No, nah, it's called like. Well, that's the thing is, I don't know if you've ever known anybody that could be supportive and whoop your ass at the same time. <laughs> that's my wife. That's it. So she's that's just that's like, it. don't be a pussy. Get up. You got to go walk. You got to do your PT. I love so, it. Hell if yeah, anybody hell ever yeah. has to do any kind of knee stuff, that's my one bit of advice I'll tell them is don't wimp out on the PT. You're gonna cry. It's gonna hurt. But if you do everything you're supposed to do, you'll be all right. So yeah. here I am, two new knees. Hell yeah. Titanium, yeah. baby. Yeah, Dom's been looking into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but the VA surgeons, yeah. you know, they'll fuck you up. They won't give you shit. Do <laughs> they still haven't gave me any fucking eczema cream. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm <Man>. getting. <laughs> He's been talking about this for so oh, long. Fucked up since the first episode. I'm getting the ec- my, some, my boy watched the show. He was like, I'll bring you some uh, the next time we hang out. I'm getting secondhand. Steroid crick. <laughs> Damn. It's not even like it's Percocet or anything. All right, so we, we don't even have to verify this now, but I bet you by the time we're done with this, my wife is going to have a recommendation for you for some eczema cream. <laughs> Ooh, I'll, I'll fucking take all the... I, this, it I ain't hurts. Even In the winter, too? Oh, oh okay. Mm, ain't no fucking joke. You need a recommendation for your hemorrhoids, hey, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said <laughs> I'm, that. I'm yeah. not verifying that. I'm I not need, saying she's going to hook you up on that side. <laughs> not, not the hemorrhoids. Maybe some other shit, but not the hemorrhoids. <laughs> you good? With some other oh. huh? You know you admit it last episode. Yeah, I did hemorrhoid. admit it. I got it. I got the hemorrhoid. <laughs> but you He's don't want to fix it? Is that what no, I'm No, I want to fix it. But you know what? Fuck it. If you got hemorrhoid cream, it was a fix. Send it. We fuck should it. get a PO box. Fix my ass. I don't know. Brandon's like, well, the way I see it, it's a cushion. I <laughs> sit here on it. It's all right. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> We'll fix it. <laughs> hey, you don't need to Brandon's fix it. mom pump doesn't it believe pump in mental up. health, yeah. but he doesn't believe in physical health. You know? <laughs> He's fine. That, that is that true. That sentence says so much. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> My favorite is when I'm watching y'all show and Brandon goes straight to the camera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be watching and editing. You know, we got like three cameras, right? right? So I'll be looking through them. And then he does that when he doesn't say anything either. He'll just look at the camera and be like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so sometimes I just cut over. I know. I, I love that. Yeah, true. Just keep, keep doing that. Hell yeah. He sits there. He just nods his head. Yet yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Brandon. No. <laughs> yeah, no. one time I got in a situation. I was like, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. What the fuck are we talking about? You're like, no. Oh, no. That, was, that was like yesterday. Yeah, yeah that was last one. <laughs> last week. Yeah. One yeah, time. That was last one. <laughs> so I got in a situation one time. Yeah. 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 That's how all his best stories start. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there was this one guy. <laughs> I was a fat ass kid. And just, just happened. He's like Theo Vaughn in that way. Yeah. He just ran to say crazy shit. <laughs> And then I hear my own air brakes. What did he say? <laughs> Brandon has a whole fan club. Yeah. That's why we have this camera. They were like, we got to have a camera on Brandon. Yeah. That's really why we changed it. Yeah. It's 100%. Request. Yeah. And you know what? Nobody ever roasted us on the episode that we said, roast, comment a roast, and you'll get $25. Nobody ever, ever did it. Oh, yeah. So how I about you? too much. Huh? They love you too much. They yeah. Oh, damn. You could have just said Dom's fat and you would have won $25. Damn it. I would have voted for you. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Damn it. I should have just went on a different account and pretended like I was a random person. Yeah. <laughs> right. I should have called a family $25. member. Hook them up. <laughs> it's still up for grabs. Go back to episode six or whatever. Whatever. What, I don't remember. Which is, I think it's sci-fi, is right? Because Charlie's on yeah, there. Yeah, six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you could be a comedian and, and uh, yeah. still comment on it if you if you like. Yeah. <laughs> <What's> your, <laughs> I was trying to think of something to do right here. Do you do you act ever? 
I, are you into acting? I like acting a lot. Um, and it's funny because I was going through some stuff recently and I was reminded of acting I did in college. Ooh, ooh, ooh. At Athens State University. Ooh. I was uh, part of the Dream Sleeves players. See, what had happened was... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I was a career student. It took me like 10 years to get my undergrad degree just because I kept changing my mind. Oh, I'm with you. I'm on year seven right now. And... <laughs> And Foreign counting. I, w- <laughs> I went through everything for an elementary degree and got up to student teaching. And I'm like, I can't do this. Mm. They're too young. They'll never get my jokes. So <laughs> I changed to secondary language arts. And at that point, I needed some electives. And I went to, I took a theater elective just because I, I had to have a ELA type elective. First night I went in there, they were reading for parts on uh, for To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know what it meant to read for a part. They were like, hey, uh, we're auditioning tonight. You want to read for a part? I'm like, I know how to read. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so they handed me a script, and I read for the part, and I got cast as Mayella Yule, the white trash lady that got <laughs> raped, supposedly, <laughs> in yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do you don't have to read that, Kim. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they do have a movie, Dom. Yeah. So, do they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it's it a did. black and white movie, though, right? Yeah, you... Took me out. Oh, so now, 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 now it's racist? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, don't, isn't that the one where they call uh, Jim? <laughs> that's not, no, that's, that's Huckleberry, Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, yeah. Okay, you, there is a Jim in To Kill a Monkey, okay. it's J-M, which starts, is short for Jeremy, who is the son. Oh, okay, okay. Scout is the main character, it's her brother. Okay. Jim. I'm going back and watching it now. Me too. Let's watch it's it together. That, and it's really a good movie. It holds up. I mean, as oh, much as... Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird is about on a trial, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Okay, now it's coming back to me. <laughs> it's coming back to me. I, I, I what did you think that. it was? I'm not going to lie to you. thought it was a I hunting was, mania. Yeah, I did. I did. I thought it, <laughs> I thought it was a Huckleberry Fist story. <laughs> so let me tell you this. You know, now I'm a teacher, and I teach To Kill a Mockingbird because mm-hmm. I teach freshmen. And it always kills me. And you know the ones who don't really read the book whenever they're like... In the book, How to Kill a Mockingbird, I'm like, it's not a how-to book. <laughs> Damn. That would be... <laughs> That'd be, you'd be like, That's my ass. Oh, well. <laughs> you got to get a net. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So I asked you that because, you know, we do skits. Would you mm. ever would you ever be in one of our skits? A hundred percent. Actually we had um I had an idea that I threw out to Jessica on the way here for a skit. Oh um, shit. Okay. Yeah. You wanna do it all for her? It's on, it's up to you. Yeah, we could do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Hey. What, what what I mean I mean to explain what it is if you want to do it off camera or on camera. Oh, I don't care. That's up okay. to you. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So the idea that I had is looking like this and like having this shirt on. Um, to do one where people are talking to me as if, you know, they're assuming that I'm gay. And I'm like, why do people keep thinking I'm gay? Oh, <laughs> like, my you know, God. I'm That's just, good. I just have a roommate for 15 years. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I like dick as much as a next girl. <laughs> or whatever, but playing yeah. on that idea. I, looking like this and people making assumptions and I love, not being real. I love that. I already got it so. turning in the, in the head right now. Okay. Uh, how you thinking? How you thinking the setup? Like, where's the first scene? I don't know. I didn't get that deep. It mm-hmm. was just on the way here. <laughs> don't worry about it. We're, we're going I looked in the mirror and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something needs to happen with all that. <laughs> well, Dom's the gas station attendant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, one time I went, uh, I, I used to buy liquor whenever I was uh, 16 because I had this, I had a facial hair since I was 16. Yeah. And uh, I went to the, uh, I think they were Indian or, or they could have been anything. But uh, they, well, no, they, they were well, one. They, they had were, to have been so. They, 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 were, they were one of the Middle Eastern or, or Asian. I know Indians. Asian. I'm pretty sure they were. I'm pretty sure they were Indian. But uh, it's crazy because I lived over there for, <laughs> for two years. It's crazy because I have a map. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. So, so uh, I, I was in a wrestler, so my name got in the paper because I won this tournament. And they were like, this is you. This is you. And I was like, oh, man. So they wouldn't sell me liquor. So I, <laughs> I literally went home and put a towel over my head and wrapped it up and went back and they sold it to me. Shut up. I swear to God. I have no witness. Way. I swear to God. We'll ask Thilo and Sal right now. They were they were in the car with me. I, and it was a pink towel. Thilo wasn't smokes even- crap. Right. <laughs> He's not a reputable source. <laughs> He's gonna fuck you up. He's coming down like in a month to shoot this kid. 
<laughs> if you're wondering in our uh, picture for our channel who rolled the crack pipe out of tinfoil. <laughs> We're going to put a picture up of D-Lo right here. <laughs> he going to be like, come on, man. I, I, I do photography. Oh, yeah. I can't be out here like this. <laughs> Speaking of crack pipes, I want to know where that came from. Oh, that's uh, my friends. Go ahead. Sh- yeah, just, don't just, act like you don't want to touch yeah, it. Yeah, you had it up to your mouth. Yeah, we've show, had it, it. show it to the camera and the tits. Uh, so uh, my friends went to Puerto Rico and they saw tits and a dick and they were like, of course we get this for Dom. <laughs> I have both. <laughs> the best of both worlds. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> uh, yeah, my friends are dicks. <laughs> You know, it's actually a fossil. It's not even wood. It's a fossilized penis from like a thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah, right? Is it really? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> How would I well, know? I, I know. I was, that's what I was thinking. I was like, hold on, hold on. Wow. <laughs> Did you know something like that? <laughs> Maybe I, I haven't looked at it enough. <laughs> this is King Caesar's. <laughs> King Caesar's. <laughs> little Caesar's. <laughs> yeah, li- Little King Caesar. Pizza, or pizza. King Little Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot and ready over there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, more like launchable size. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's big enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's know, plenty. That's a respectable <laughs> bottle opener. It's plenty. He used it. You know? <laughs> that's the only way to pop the hemorrhoids. <laughs> For Brandon, is that why Brandon okay. has them? You gotta tell me that after. What's going I'm on? I'm just playing. <laughs> Brandon, don't, do not. Use Hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. <laughs> You guys are a hoop. <laughs> you guys are a hoop, man. A kahoot. <laughs> See, that's what happens when he gets around all white women. <laughs> oh, you guys are such a hoot. <laughs> He's so ambiguous, he just blends in everywhere. <laughs> he assimilates. I, I've, I've been told that you're one of the good ones multiple times. Oh, He's no. like, you know, they're not all, you're one of the good ones, but... <laughs> Like, they think that's a compliment. Yes. You got to let it roll because usually it's around a lot of white people. You got to let it roll. If you ever hear that coming from Ogre, he knows that, like, he's... He knows that that's a joke. Ogre so. could do no wrong for okay. me. Yeah. Ogre could do anything. He could do no wrong. I love him. I love how he's a hugger because I'm a hugger too. Yeah. He'll be like, because I thought he didn't like me because I went to go get a fist pump one time. <laughs> and he it. looked at he literally looked at me like this. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh shit. I was like, Ogre doesn't like me? I was like, I don't know what I did. And then uh, the next time, I like tried to give him a fist bump again. And then he just gave me a hug. I was like, okay, I got, I'm, on, I'm on Ogre's good side. I feel good now. Okay, so... Inside baseball, he didn't see it the first time you were trying to give oh, it to him. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yep. So if you guys don't know who we're talking about, local comic, his name is Ogre, Jerry Woodruff, uh, one of my best friends in the world, is blind and diabetic and... Um, his, foot, his foot. Well, yeah, that's a side. Mm-hmm. So he's missing. He only has one appendage that has all the digits. He has one hand that has all five. Now mm-hmm. he's got one hand that's missing a finger, and both feet are missing at least one or more toes. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's had it rough. But he looks like super dumb and racist, and he's neither of those things. Oh, and he's But he plays cool. into it for his comedy. He's hilarious. You, uh, whenever men first came to uh, oh. shenanigans, and he won this night. <laughs> and he damn sure, because you could tell he was trying to get in his set, but she kept on interrupting, and he laid into it, but in the funniest way. Yeah. And he, she said, uh, God hates you or something like that. He was like, I got, f- I'm fuck here in a wheelchair. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> God hates me. Oh, uh, he's the best, We're going to put a picture of him up here. Hey, he's yeah, a great yeah. follow on social media, too. He posts oh, some yeah, funny shit funny. every funny single shit. day. Yep. So he posts the stuff that they post on Twitter that I never see on Instagram. Oh, I like really? the little funny memes, mm-hmm. and I hate on Instagram how you can't comment with a fucking picture. Yeah, I hate everything about the functionality of Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, give me something, give me yep. something. Right. I'm right here with you. <laughs> They're gonna say it's just because we're old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my grandma would just want me to tell Mark Zuckerberg to change it because I have that ability. <laughs> You know Mark, right? <laughs> yeah, we went to school together. It was great. All right, so you had a comedy series filmed that shenanigans for Amazon Prime. Yeah, called... it was supposed to be. Oh. <laughs> that was that was a big wah, wah. Oh, was oh, it? Damn. Yeah. They backed out? So, okay, so what happened was um, <laughs> this gentleman named Jesse Pollard 
and he went to went through this process of contacting Amazon and they're like if you will shoot this content then you know we'll put it up and based on views and all this like there was some kind of an agreement as like they greenlit him to do a trial if you will so he hired a professional videographer and all this and we shot I don't remember I think it was six episodes or something like that and um and they were really good episodes but then um something technical went wrong with mm-hmm. them like they didn't meet certain parameters for Amazon so they never put them up but, but y'all did YouTube. shoot yeah, okay they're on YouTube okay okay yeah. yeah technical stuff we're learning that like yeah like I, I get nervous after every shoot because I'm like if one if if the if the um the mics aren't recording mm-hmm. or or two or one of the cameras goes out like it's a big deal then you yeah. you lose shit yeah yeah it's but, awful but, but we've been on it and brandon great yeah. producer over there hell yeah <laughs> back there on the case <laughs> but speaking of comedy series we also had um a, a two-part series shot at shenanigans for demi tv d-e-m-i tv mm-hmm. which is its own streaming platform and um it was called the demigods of comedy and um i know part one got put up there it's available on there i'm not sure about part two though okay it's and this is on oh you said it's semi t is he demi demi tv okay Uh, a good friend of ours demetrius malone is the gentleman who is where the demi comes from okay and um it's his streaming platform he's a playwright actor uh he has been and i think still does write for a lot of like soap operas and stuff like for and he's written stuff for netflix and all this other kind of thing he's predominantly a writer but he started out wanting to be an actor and then got the bug to be a writer and now he does all sorts of stuff okay okay he's local to huntsville too by the way hmm. i'm gonna have to look this up yeah he started out in florence but he's in huntsville right. now what's the name again demetrius it's d-e-m-e-t-r-i-u-s demetrius malone each Yes. <laughs> you said Malone? Yes, sir. Malone. And so what's cool about the... Yeah, none of those. None of those. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Hopefully it's not the guy in the top right. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, say that definitely picture. not the mugshot. <laughs> comedy. I'm going to put comedy. He did say but, picture. <laughs> oh, okay. Upper right corner. That's him. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Right here? Yeah, and see next oh, to it, Jimmy TV. Website. Let me save it. Uh Save that too. So yeah, that's Demetrius. There you go. That's, oh, there's Homegrown, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's the poster oh, for shit. Homegrown. I got kicked off next month for Black History Month. Oh, <laughs> I still produce the show, kind of. <laughs> I heard you say something about affirmative action. <laughs> Damn, affirmative action hires, dude. I thought they ended that. <laughs> you don't like it now. <laughs> Jonathan was like, I'll put you up at the end, but I'm not going to pay you. <laughs> like, I'll be right with the like, game, yeah, dude. Right? Yeah. But before we get off uh, Demetrius, Demi TV, he started that because he wanted to uh, be able to produce he has written and produced shows actual original content for that platform but he also gives a lot of uh, space and opportunity for other folks that are more like original independent indie kinds of stuff mm-hmm. on his platform so shout out demi tv mm-hmm. so nice. what would you what what um advice would you give to somebody wanting to go up there and, and do improv or acting like uh do you have any advice for that well, for improv, we do some things that can kind of help you figure that out before you make a financial commitment. Mm-hmm. We, once a month, on the second Sunday of every month, we do an open improv jam. And so it's from zero to experience. We just ask that folks are like at least 16 to come to that. Mm-hmm. And um, we have some of our improv, more experienced improv coaches and players who will run exercises. It's like an open mic, but for improv. And then that way you can come and sit in. You don't have to play if you don't want to. If you're just curious about it, you can sit and watch. You can come and put your name in the bucket and play. And then if, excuse me, <clears throat> and then if you decide that you want to pursue improv, we have classes going on that I really recommend. 
So you start out with level one improv, and that just started today, actually. So it won't be back for a while. And it's sold out. We got people on the waiting list. So it's like when these yeah. classes pop up, you want to get those those seats. But we've got um, level one started today, and then they'll have another level two, and we just kind of keep building that because that's another thing that we saw a need and we're trying to fill mm-hmm. and, and build the scene for that. So my, my advice for that is definitely – Make sure that you want to do it. And then and the other thing is, as you guys know, by seeing how much you pay for a four loco, as you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're not in it to make a ton of money. We just want to keep the doors open and try to make enough money to, to start paying our talent more. But um, w- the classes are very reasonable. Like it's 150 bucks for a six weeks class. Oh, that's cheap. Yep. Uh, every friend that I brought to st- uh, shenanigans has, and like one of my boy who just came to the newbie show, he's like, I already told my wife. I'm going once a month uh, to shenanigans, <laughs> and I don't care go. what she says. <laughs> I swear to God, Damn, he put his foot down. He, dude. he put it down before he even good. before he even went home. <laughs> we were at Moody Monday. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to shenanigans that <laughs> once a month. Good. Good. <laughs> it's a great time, people. I'm telling you, you will have, and it's so much to do. Shen- What's the website? HuntsvilleLaughs.com. HuntsvilleLaughs.com. Go to that, and you'll see it. If you look up, if you search Google search Huntsville Comedy, it's the first uh, one of the. I think the first thing that pops up, or yeah, maybe yeah, second. I think it probably depends on which terms you use. Yeah, yeah. and then because um, that's how I, that's how I found out about it. And that's the only reason I'm doing stand up now in here is because that was uh, the one that gave me the opportunity. And I always say thank you. I tell you that every time. Ooh, I love. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Love thank it, you, man. me and Brandon. Me yeah, and Brandon thank there. you. That's how we met. We all met like <laughs> yeah, that. We all Plus, met you like got that. my first opportunity yeah. too with the DJ thing. I was about to say Brandon was a volunteer at Shenanigans yeah. before he ever started doing comedy. Yeah. So yeah. he Dang, got up in there man. and started working the board and stuff and helping us out in that way when he could. He got busy with school and stuff, but you know. Yeah. But that's man. so cool though. Yeah. Like yeah. to have something like that. Like that's pretty much the reason all this started. Mm-hmm. That's where we met. Mm-hmm. Like it's it is it's so crazy to think about that. Literally standing awesome. outside, waiting for the doors to open. Yeah, talking for a little bit. Going mm-hmm. by by the time we got in there, well, you know, I went straight to the book. <laughs> but yeah. before we even got out of the line, he's like, "We should start a podcast." It literally, all happened at Shenanigans. That's awesome. Always so thankful, and we need to talk about something more serious. Uh, if Sci-Fi's not on a show, he needs to stay his ass out of the grave room. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for saying this. I dude. mean, what, I was just looking. I was like, "Oh, we we get we get all this." Who uh, put him on the board? Who dude. put him on the board? <laughs> that would be myself uh, and my lovely wife, Jessica, yeah. recommended sci-fi to our board. <laughs> sci-fi is a shit. I just love fucking with him. I could. I just that he, was so funny when you did that, though. Oh he, my god! He walked in there, and I just looked. And then he starts plugging up his phone. Like, oh, are you comfortable? <laughs> Do you want something to drink too? Make yourself at home. Yeah. I didn't see you on the lineup, sir. <laughs> it says comics. Yeah. Comics only. Yeah. That was a big deal to get in the green room. You can ask oh, that yeah, the funny. whole time I was in there. Like, you are in the green room. Because when I was in shenanigans before, the sci-fi was like, oh, you ever been in the green room before? I was like, no. And then he put his hand in the middle of my chest. And it was like, okay, your time will come. <laughs> he said it just like that. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> it's a rite of passage. <laughs> we don't let you ride on the wall in there, but we'll give you some food and drink. So. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, you can ride on the wall and, and uh, stand up live, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's yeah. it's hmm. a their thing is you can sign the wall if you can find a spot. Now people are signing the ceiling and the door <laughs> oh, and the floor and whatever. JJ's on it uh, tonight. Yeah. Hell yeah! Don't put your name on the wall. I'll sign the floor. <laughs> 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 and uh, I will I will buy you a drink at Shenanigans if you find my name on the wall and take a picture of it. Ooh. Challenge accepted. Ooh. There you go. Sci-Fi has a similar thing with his stickers that he puts around everywhere. Like oh, he'll yeah. put one at every venue. Like there's one on the locker or the speakeasy. Like going in there, right. he's like, if you find it, well, he doesn't. He ain't shit. He don't offer you anything. But he's like, look for him. <laughs> I'll be looking for that. You though. can do a scavenger hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I just signed Kim's name on the wall <laughs> instead of my own. Skrr. I know my signature. <laughs> Oh, uh, do you, do you have stickers that we can buy? I have stickers that I will give you because they don't look anything like me now. Okay. <laughs> like the, well, I have some that are joke related, uh-huh. so they're specific to certain bits that I have. Oh, that's tight. And then I have uh, some that have my image, and they don't look like me at all because they 
like okay, I get, oh, we want to put because we're going to get a bigger map right yeah so whenever okay. we're going to redo the whole the whole background and get a bigger map and we want it so we can you know put they're like all so close together the shenanigans map is, is marked yeah, it is one mm-hmm. of these pins it's, it's okay. because okay. i sat there on google maps <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> with awesome. the pins and hit them and the lady at Michael's looked at me crazy when I bought these items together. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the cork board, this, the red string. I was like, don't worry, I have a map of Huntsville in my car. <laughs> and she's like, yes, but what are you marking? <laughs> <laughs> and why do you have duct tape? <laughs> <laughs> And you look like that. Have yeah. you ever seen him walk? He walks just like Michael Myers. No. If you like, if nobody's paying attention to him, you're like, I swear, me, me and my friend Dilo, when we shot the first, uh, the intro to the Com College, right? Uh-huh. And he was walking across, like not meaning to look like a murderer. And I'm like, we just start cracking up laughing. I was like, why is he walking like that? You know what it is? It was living with my grandparents. We have a long hallway with a creaky wooden floor so you have to learn to walk without your footsteps to make a noise unless you want to get yelled at <laughs> oh okay yeah. okay my footsteps don't make a sound i'm untraceable if i, I walk think... in the snow you won't see my shoe print dude <laughs> <laughs> i'm light on my feet <laughs> and in those troubled times jj was carrying you <laughs> footprints in the sand jesus and anyway i digress <laughs> Yeah, me and Dom do look like Jesus and Muhammad. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. I see it. We're here. But truthfully, he would look more like Jesus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I seen the picture of the AI generated one. I look like I look like a lot of the Catholic imagery of Jesus. You, know? <laughs> you look like the photo negative of the real <laughs> Jesus. Oh <as well. laughs> yeah. I look like Nick Fury. Who? Who? Nick Fury. <laughs> Nick Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Not Mick Foley. Nick Foley. Nick no, Fury. Nick Nobody said Fury. Nick Fury. Is so I said, I said, you why. know who that is? You don't no. know Nick Fury? I, I don't think anybody in this room knows okay, what you're I talking about you right now. Everybody. Last me, week he said he looked like Robert Pattinson. Let me yeah. tell you Nick Fury. <laughs> what is he about to pull up? Hold on. Let me pull it up. Nick Fury. Fury. Nick Fury. Yeah, Nick Fury. Fury. You're saying Fury. I'm like, saying Fury. Like, I have a theory. Yeah. <laughs> Fury. 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 There, you there go. we go. Fury. Yeah. Nick Fury. Hey. Yeah. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Yeah. Thank you. What you got here, Kim? Oh, here. Oh. I have. That's the sticker I want right there. Well, <laughs> open the bag and see what all is inside. Now, some of it is shenanigan swag, but I personally made the best part of that bag. So okay. go ahead. Oh, dang. It's not food either, so y'all don't salivate. <laughs> I want to keep that. No, you don't need to keep it. Trust me. Okay. That's what oh, I made for y'all. Oh damn! <laughs> That's sick. Wow. Dude. Thank you. That's dope, actually. You could. Damn. Oh. You've got merch Brandon. or hell yeah. Or that I'm, I'm could be that what you camera. guests earn when they come on your podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you. Whatever. This is thank sick. You. This is so. Get over here. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is this is awesome. This is so bad. The logo badass. and everything. Dude, Damn. that's tight. That's cool. That I is love tight. this so much. Thank you. You're thank right. you that's so dope. much. Kim. Thank you. You're welcome. Really? Now, there's wow. a, the rest of it's just shenanigan swag. Oh, yeah, oh, man. And I didn't know about Ooh. your super secret, um, you know. We got a we got a book researcher fall. guy, so oh, I'll get a, another set for <laughs> for the other gentleman. Hell nice. yeah! Oh yes, See, perfect. That's what I was saying. This is now, perfect. Now you've got... I'm not gonna oh, do shit. it on this one though, because we're gonna save these. Yeah, yeah. and we're gonna have it on. We'll just... Well, I mean, it's one oh, Dom, go ahead and put this one in your car. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh. We got. Let me move this out the way. Oh wow. Oh, damn, the custom Ooh. pins. We got shenanigans pins. Bottle. Bottled openers. Uh, I just messed up that word. Bottled <laughs> openers. <laughs> and uh, dough pads. This is awesome, Kel. Thank, yeah, I mean, thank you. For real. You're going to see dope. this. You're going to see these definitely. Oh, yeah, for sure. Time. We don't take these out. Uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for oh, being here. I'm going to give you an applause. Like, thank, yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me on. I've been looking forward to this. I really enjoy watching every episode. Oh, we appreciate thank you watching. You. I mean, there's, and and thank you so much for coming on. I remember oh, yeah. uh, you said something about coming on podcast, and it blew my mind because I was like, they will come on. I was, I was yeah. like, him yeah. will come on our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
the way I see this and as the scene as a whole is everybody right now, especially is doing their part and it's benefiting everyone. And you guys are really performing a service for the scene as a whole. And we appreciate that. And that's, it's right in line with what we try to do. You yeah. know, it's like you know, everybody says a whole rising tide lifts all boats, but I think that that's true. Mm -hmm. you know? I believe if that we too. work together. We're going to be bringing lots of really cool stuff to fruition. And you guys are playing a very big role in that. So I appreciate what y'all are doing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Kim. And we're, and, and this scene will blow up. It's too much funny. Yeah. It's too much funny. And people love funny. Yep. And, and once, and, and they're already coming out. I mean, they're, they're already coming out to shows. Once we get more eyes and everything, this thing is just going to, this thing is going to blow. And hopefully we get you some good clips and you can put out there. One thing uh, I have to say though, is that I, I don't see a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in there. <sighs> you see? Let's see, if we would have waited this long, the <laughs> air would have staled the crust on the bread, and the whole experience would have been on. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's true. We can make a, right. like a cooking show episode where I teach people how to do this. I think I you think, should. Now, I we should charge mean. for this, but we're not going to. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is, if you wouldn't open your mouth about how you're the best <laughs> at it, there wouldn't be an issue on, at all. You know, we would have no problem at hand. Yeah. I gotta let him know though. You do gotta let him know. Thank you. Sci-fi sci can attest. He he had one, and you're going you're gonna eat one after this. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you you, you see me, right? You, yeah, okay. <laughs> we got we, we got we got we got to we got to try this out because I I want to try one too because you say they got the best one, your best. Yeah, you I want to try. Well, well, I'm not anybody. I'm not saying. I'm telling oh, you. I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> you know how they say Pixar doesn't happen? Sammy or it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, Kim, this is the end of the episode. Yep. So what you're going to do right now is talk to this camera and have anything you want to promote, and it will be on the side of you. Just go to HuntsvilleLaughs.com and look at everything that we have going on at Shenanigans. Please come to shows. Please tell everybody you know because we're a nonprofit, so we can't afford advertising yet. We're working on that. Thank you, Arts Huntsville. Um, and just get out here. Show, show up. Show up to stuff. Hell yeah. And mm -hmm. it's K. Wilson comedy on all platforms, by the way. Okay. Nice. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. It's Thanks been a for pleasure. coming on. It's been a pleasure. Hell yeah.